Okay, here we are again. Uh, since uh, since you started with the CoQ10 and we went through 100 milligrams for 90 days, 200 milligrams for another 90 days, and 300 milligrams for 60 days, and then things started to kind of fall apart, and resulted in three trips to the emergency room where you were in each case you were so weak you were almost comatose and uh, and you were extremely nauseated and d during those four or five weeks uh, you really didn't feel good really very good any of the time and the last trip to the emergency room uh, the emergency room doctor suspected that it was low blood sugar so he ordered a glucose tolerance test and also an MRI. Okay, You had the glucose tolerance test on Tuesday which was what March 1st, 2nd? 2nd I think. Uh, and it's interesting because well, describe what happened when you, when they gave you the glut of sugar. I just got nauseated. You're going to have to speak up. I got nauseated. Uh, how soon? Oh, probably within five, ten minutes. Okay, and you, how sick did you get? Sick enough that they wanted me to lay down. And did, were you weak too? A little. Uh, and then... Well, the test lasted five hours, and as it went on, did you get worse? At the end, I did. Yes. The end, you got worse. Okay. The worse. the results of the glucose tolerance test uh, uh, after fasting, you were 92. Half an hour after uh, the glucose, you were 107, and then an hour later, you were 85. Uh, four or was it five hours right at the end you were 58 which is pretty low but we didn't realize it but a glucose tolerance test basically they're looking for diabetes and you don't suffer from diabetes it, it, it seems that you are suffering from what is called reactive hypoglycemia which as I understand it is basically after a the intake of a lot of carbohydrates or some sugar your body takes about four hours before that dumps into your bloodstream and it dumps in a glut and it overwhelms your endocrine system and your insulin doesn't react properly and it as I say it overwhelms your system and it causes your blood sugar to go very low and it throws you into a syndrome of being very, very weak uh, with, well, okay, the symptoms that you have had are one, extreme weakness and fatigue, uh, nauseous, being nauseous, your stomach, you, you want to vomit, you want to pass out, uh, you were so weak the last, before you went to the emergency room that you didn't have the strength to talk, you didn't have the strength to smile, you didn't have the strength to hold your arms up. Uh, you were almost comatose. And then, oh, 45 minutes later, uh, you started to recover from it. And this hit you in less than a minute, you went from feeling very good, comfortable, relaxed, watching TV, and in less than a minute, you were you had to you, you, I had to help you up to bed. Uh, well, anyway, it the good thing about it appears that the test, which the doctor's office called and said that everything was okay, the test actually created the problems that we've been dealing with. 
uh, after you got home from the test, you were so cold that you had to have blankets and comforters put on you and you slept for four hours and didn't feel especially good the rest of the day. Since then, we have been, you have been eating every two to three hours uh, crackers and peanut butter uh, and small meals and right now, for, well for the past three days, you have felt really good? Yes. Especially good? Especially good. Uh, no symptoms whatsoever and on top of that you feel energetic. Right. When I said we were going to do this video, she said, I've got to get up and go to work. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it seems that I don't know if reactive hypoglycemia is really that difficult to diagnose but considering that you had had two glucose tolerance tests, tests before one uh, nine years ago and I know you have had one 40 years ago uh, if the interpretation of the test is the problem, uh, but our doctor hasn't called yet, and I don't know what he's going to tell us, but regardless of what he tells us, we know now that that your blood sugar is is the source of the problem. Then the other question is the CoQ10, which you were taking, made a significant difference uh, and don't really know exactly why but we're continuing a hundred milligrams of CoQ10 and you're snacking uh, every three hours every two hours whatever you're taking uh, a snack of, of peanut butter and a cracker before you go to bed and first thing in the morning when you get up you're eating a cracker and peanut butter and until we can talk to an endocrinologist that has that knows something trust me they're hard to find uh, we're just going to have to doctor play doctor ourselves uh, we intend to try and go back to Mayo's for a consultation with with uh, an endocrinologist at Mayo's and get some guidelines from them if they understand the situation. Uh, I estimate that in the last 18 years, primarily in the last 10 years, that it has cost insurance companies, Medicare and us probably approximately two hundred thousand dollars chasing this and the problem assuming that this has been the problem all along it could have been handled simply by controlling blood sugar with diet uh, with not a lot of effort well anyway I hope this is beneficial to someone and I'll ask again anyone that has any input into what we've been dealing with and what we've apparently found and or CoQ10 uh, please either email us or call us our phone number is area code 309-343-8503 and it's Perry and Mary McFarland and we live in northwestern Illinois. Thank you very much. I hope this is beneficial to someone. Bye-bye.